Hi, I'm Rose Nierman. Today I'll be giving an introduction to medical billing in dentistry. Medical billing helps patients receive needed treatment. Uh, the ability to utilize medical benefits allows patients to move forward with very important and life-changing procedures such as TMJ treatment, obstructive sleep apnea, appliances, and oral surgeries. Billing Medical also differentiates your practice. It's going to help increase case acceptance and add additional services and revenue to your practice. Keep in mind, too, that many dental policies require that medical be billed first. Uh, this is an EOB for a, an oral surgery uh, from dental that said, uh, we'll look at the claim after you bill medical um, and send us a, a denial or payment for medical. So now it's become a, a necessity to learn how to bill medical insurance. Also, dental doesn't reimburse for some procedures that will go to medical, such as sleep apnea appliances, TMD treatment, and numerous oral surgeries such as bone grafts. Keep in mind, too, that limits that dental insurance has do not apply to medical. There's no frequency rule on exams and radiographs with medical insurance. Um, tip, medical insurance typically reimburses a higher fee than dental does. UCRs are usually quite higher, so be sure to use your normal fee, not an insurance contracted fee when billing medical insurance. Uh, medical billing is going to help save the dental benefits for dental procedures. And medical typically doesn't have the caps such as a $1,500 per year limit like dental does. And this way you can, in many cases, provide surgical procedures through medical, restorative part through dental. The sleep apnea appliances are a medical condition with a dental solution, so th they will always be billed to medical insurance. Accident cases, whether it's a fractured tooth, missing tooth, or displaced teeth, uh, should be billed to medical, and there are ICD-10 codes for accidents as well. Uh, keep in mind that when, in the case of an accident, the insurance has to pay for any dental uh, services, including restorative treatment, uh, as well as surgical treatment. Um, so how do you solve the medical necessity puzzle? Uh, make sure that you have the clinical notes demonstrating medical necessity. Having the right diagnosis code with the ICD-10 codes, the insurance is going to be looking for the condition uh, or the symptoms the patient has to justify medical necessity. And that's all done through your narrative reports and documentation. And Nierman Practice Management has designed detailed questionnaire and exams that are specific to uh, TMJ disorder, uh, dental sleep medicine, and oral surgery. So very important to use a dedicated questionnaire for medical necessity. Also, the Affordable Care Act has a non-discrimination clause for health care providers uh, that insurance companies cannot discriminate based on a provider's degree. So that's important to know. Uh, with medical billing, it's a little different uh, from dental in that you always need an ICD diagnosis code. It's a different uh, procedure coding set, CPT codes, uh, dedicated uh, claim form just for medical, and to show through your documentation that the patient's medically compromised. Okay. And we have an acronym, PAID to determine when do I send these to medical? Well, if the patient has pain, there's an accident, infection, or a dysfunction, that could very well be a medical necessity. So we start looking at our patients a little differently when we're evaluating medical necessity, uh, determining if the patient has any symptoms or exam findings of atrophy, jaw pain, uh, signs of obstructive sleep apnea, uh, infection, myalgia, comorbidities of the oral systemic connection, uh, underdeveloped airway, diminished jaw function, and problems with mastication and digestion as well as infection, uh, cysts, osteitis, abscess, uh, trauma, and oral effects of disease. Uh, atypical face pain has its own ICD diagnosis code as well as the other things that we mentioned. So as you can see, there are many conditions for which you can bill medical. This is a major medical policy 
that talks about when treatment's medical in nature and when it would be reimbursable through medical. Uh, if the patient has disease of the facial bones, trauma, TMJ, correcting facial deformities present at birth, and sleep apnea. Also, they say dental in nature, medical benefits covered under medical could be clearance exams uh, to detect infection prior to a surgical or chemotherapy procedure. Uh, X-rays in connection with the services will be covered under the medical plan, treatment of oral infections and removal of cysts. Uh, another policy states that in many cases, bone grafting may be considered and sleep apnea, of course, will always be billed to medical and most insurance companies do cover for the sleep apnea appliances. As you can see from this particular policy, the insurance companies typically will pay for mild, moderate, or severe uh, sleep apnea with an or for an oral appliance as long as uh, that you can show the patient either refused CPAP or uh, tried CPAP and is intolerant to it. And then you have uh, information about their, their needs and comorbidities as well. For instance, if the patient has mild sleep apnea and we look at policies, they want us to document if the patient's had history of stroke, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, impaired cognition, mood disorders or insomnia, or excessive daytime sleepiness. Uh, TMJ policy example goes on to state that the policy, and this is very typical of, of most medical policies, do cover the examination visit uh, for TMJ uh, disorder and the diagnostic x-rays, as well as many medical insurance companies will cover the uh, intraoral appliances as well under medical. So a deathly compromised to medically compromised patient. Once the patient's medically compromised, you're showing that patient may have problems with function, oral conditions, oral infection, difficulty masticating, swallowing, uh, problems with digestion or pain, and obstructive sleep apnea comorbidities such as high blood pressure, daytime sleepiness, CPAP refusal, or, or CPAP intolerance. So just like anything else, it's what you do up front that counts. I always say if it isn't written down, it doesn't, didn't happen, so your documentation is going to be everything in, in billing medical insurance in the medical model. It's important to become an expert at selecting the ICD-10 codes and communicating with physicians and medical insurance with the correct codes. And having your clinical notes showing uh, the subjective objective assessment and plan uh, in your report of medical necessity. So a great starting place is uh, start asking your patients questions, uh, whether it's uh, head pain questions or, or uh, sleep apnea questions or diet limited to soft foods, and get those symptoms uh, documented so that we can get paid by medical insurance. And medical billing is going to help increase your procedures that you're doing in your office and your case acceptance so that we can help more patients.